Are we recording? Oh yeah, we're recording. Huh? Yeah, is this thing on? Now, welcome to Three Guys in a Couch. Uh, here we are. Uh, as it turns out, this isn't Three Guys in a Couch. This is, uh, I, I can't even call it Three Guys anymore. We gotta make sure we're people appropriate. I gotta see what you guys identify as, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, I think that's where we're at with it still. Let's just stick with Polisher's podcast. Yeah. It's, uh, we got three polishers on a couch. That's probably the best way to put it. Uh, but uh, no, I've got two uh, very interesting guys here. And I've been getting a lot of messages lately about people wondering where the podcast went. And uh, last year I had some health issues and muscled through some of that. And um, just it was a busy season. We had an up and down season last year. And I wanted to kind of get myself back to center before we started doing stuff. I didn't want to sound depressed on camera or anything like that. So... I got myself back to center and I've been feeling better. The new year is uh, definitely working out well and I got two great guys that came through. Uh, both of them have done my training program last year and now they're both a year past that and I feel like they both become great polishers. I've talked about both of them in um, previous podcasts and uh, yeah, I'm interested to uh, ask these guys some questions and let, let you guys hear their feedback. Um, the video part doesn't really matter. Everybody's just kind of watching it on YouTube, but the, hearing your guys' stories, I think, is what really yeah. what really makes the biggest difference. And I feel like um, even though you're both relatively new yet, I think you guys have some great uh, insight and some perspective that a lot of other, whether it's new polishers or old polishers, might really like. Um, so I'm just going to go into it. I'm going to let you both kind of introduce yourselves. Um, after that, we'll kind of go through it, and we'll start moving on from there. Yeah. So my name is Logan Steven. I'm from uh, Mount Orb, Ohio. Been doing it for about a year now. Year and three months, probably. And that's the southern part of Ohio? Yeah, near Cincinnati, outside of Cincinnati. Just outside of the Natty. Okay. Yeah, nasty Natty. I'm Hayden Meisberger. Um, I'm also from Mount Orb, Ohio. Um, we're about 10 minutes apart. And, and it's, to me, it's crazy that I have you both sitting on the same couch, yeah, considering yeah. you guys are... <laughs> Literally ten what, minutes what apart. What would be from competition? But I mean, we don't look at it like that. Like it's just. And I've said this since the beginning. I hope that you two never see each other as competition. Yeah. And just continue to do your own thing because you guys are both busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, there's plenty of trucks. You guys are both staying busy in one area within ten minutes of each other. And I've told almost everybody that comes through my training program that I have got a ton of polishers around me. Yeah. Like locally here, I have twelve. Nobody believes me until they start like counting them. But I've got 12 in my local area. This year I'm up to 12. Um, but you guys are 10 minutes apart and you're both thriving. Right. Like, yeah, not I just mean, surviving, but thriving. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely so. And you're only in it a year. You're in it for three years? Yep, just about. Um, so have you have you always been in that area? Yes. Mm -hmm. How old are you guys? I'm 21. I'm 20, 19. 21 and 19. So you've been polishing since 16. Yeah. And you've been polishing since 20. Yeah. Well... 19, I think it was. You were still 19 when you came? Uh, yeah. Yeah, last year I would have been. No. I would have been 20. Because yeah. I'll be 21 in February. Oh, yeah, in that's February, right. So, yeah. That's right. You were here, it was like before Christmas, I think, right? Because we were talking about going to Appleton. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. yep. That's right. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. get into trouble. We got two troublemakers and one not-so-troublemaker <laughs> sitting over here. Um, so, you guys have been doing it for... Logan, you've been doing it a year. Hayden, you've been doing it for three years. Um, what do you guys primarily work on? Mainly semis. Semis? Semis as well. Yeah, yeah. probably both of us semis. So once again, I, I want to reiterate, you guys are 10 minutes apart. You're both in the semi-truck market. Yeah. Um, do you guys have like crisscrossing customers, or do you guys both have your own separate customer bases? It's very much so separate. Like, yeah. There might be some that has the same last name and the same family, but... It's like, pretty boots, separate, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... So, like, you haven't had one of your customers go to him yet, or you haven't had any of your customers go to him yet? Not really. No. No, we, I mean, it's We had pretty... one cross because um, they forgot, they didn't really know I was still polishing. Yeah, that was, yeah, that, was that one time. I wasn't advertising, so. Yep. Really? Yeah. Honestly, I'll tell you, when I was early on in my career, I used to take that stuff personal. If one of my customers yeah. went to somebody else, as I've gotten older <laughs> and, and more seasoned and more veteran, um... I don't take that stuff personally anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm busy, and I can't I can't take care of everybody. 
and if you take good care of your people they'll come back mm -hmm. and if they go to somebody else for a little while and it works out and then maybe it doesn't work out in the future in the future they'll come back if you treated them right yeah exactly and i i have customers that go out west and they'll go through the big ones you know danny's uh, little sisters barstow you know all all the big places and they're like man i felt like i cheated on you i'm like you didn't like right i'm, I'm glad you're maintaining it and taking care of it yeah you gotta do what you gotta do at the time so i still hope that you guys keep that relationship and don't end up fighting with each other when somebody does lose <laughs> yeah. one to some one of the other ones right. yeah you just gotta some customers just gonna do their own things and you gotta you gotta let that stuff slide yeah so that's awesome 10 minutes apart i've got um a really good polisher not too far from here, Don Conrad. He's like, I want to say 25 minutes from me, and he travels. Yeah. Him and I are great friends. He's actually going to be coming down to Louisville with me this year to do some uh, paint detailing. Um, he does all my paint correction on all my personal vehicles and my yep. ceramic coatings and stuff. And he also polishes, and he's honestly one of the best polishers in the area. He throws me work. I throw him work. We both work hand yeah. in hand, and honestly, it works out really well. It's nice to have a guy in this area that doesn't hate me you know yeah, you're right right just works out good especially like you two um you work by yourself or you have a couple guys usually a couple guys yeah. and you work by yourself primarily yeah, solo yeah so it's nice when you guys get along if you get in a pinch sometimes you can call each other you're right or we help each other out with materials if yeah. one of us is running low and yeah yeah definitely works, have works good being by each other yeah that for works sure. out really well for sure well that's awesome um what did what got you into polishing? So I bought like a, a wheel polishing machine that you like roll in the wheel. <laughs> yep. The Aussie rim shot. Yep, that's yeah. the one. Yep. About 9,000. Do you use it at all? No. <laughs> it sits in the barn. Untouched. Really? Untouched. Untouched. Still don't use it? Never. Wow. I use it two trucks. It's really? Like, this is slowing me down. Yeah. Yeah. And now that you're doing it, now you realize how much it... Yeah, like I mean you just get such a better finish with a grinder. Like yeah. everything comes out better. Honestly, quicker too. You get a lot of people ask me like um, what I think of the Aussie machine because I every year I went to Louisville, yep. the guys are there demonstrating it. You're like, oh man, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And I get a lot of fleets ask me like what I think of it, or a lot of smaller guys ask me what I think of it. I look at it; it's a glorified hand polish machine. Very much so. If you have a big fleet, yep. Or if you have a maintenance business, uh, I'm gonna plug them here. Joe from Wheelie Polished. He is one of the only people I know made a true business out of the Aussie Rimshine. Yeah. He maintained a lot of vehicles. He sales pitched his customer, told him this machine what this machine does, what it does not do, yeah. and he built a an amazing business doing it. Um but I know very few polishers that have actually been able to make a living out of it. And honestly I think Joe from Wheelie Polish is the only polisher I know that made a business out of that thing. Everybody else I know is like, yeah, I bought it. It worked for a little while. And then I was like, you know what? I can get a better finish with a grinder. Yep. I can get it done faster. Yep. And it ended up sitting in my garage. And Joe, I, I, w I need to get him on a podcast. He um, gave it up a few years ago and got a different job. But he was a businessman. He didn't look at the polishing from a polisher standpoint. Like a lot of us enjoy polishing. Yeah. For him, he didn't really necessarily like the polishing he liked that he could make money and it was a good business. Right. It was very lucrative. And uh, I, I really want to get his perspective in the future on a podcast. But it's interesting that you had one. I didn't even know you had one. Yeah. I don't know how you've never had that. Maybe yeah. you've told me before. Uh, and I let that slip, but that kind of caught me off guard for a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bought like um, the one, you, you know, all the everything. Really? You know, every style. Yeah. It was like $8,400 shipped or something. The sanding setup and the polishing setup? Yeah. The scuff, Steer the wheels, scuff wheels, drive wheels, stuff. scuff really? wheels, like all the pads. Is it the plug-in one or the yeah, electric? The gas one. Electric, the electric one? Yeah. Because I know they have two different models. Mm -hmm. But for a fleet, they're great. Mm -hmm. Like if they have a guy like us come in and polish them once and a year. And that's what I always said is if they had like a kid, you know, like a high school kid that wanted yeah. some work, $10 an hour, keep it roll in that in there, just keep it clean. Yeah. Oh, it would be perfect for Just to maintain the wheels after we get done with them? Exactly. You know, we can get them glossed up once a year, and they can use it a couple times a year to maintain. Very mm -hmm. much so. It would be huge. What got you into it? So, my stepdad at the time, um, he's a farmer, and he had a W9. And back in, like, eighth grade, he um, said, there's this good business you can get into, and I'll buy you the stuff to do it if you do my truck. Really? And, yeah. So, finally, once I turned 16, I was like, okay, let's try this. We went out to Lowe's and got some cheap stuff and Keystone wheels, and I just started grinding away. And really? 
slowly, and fell in love with it. Yeah, I slowly started learning, but it, it took <laughs> a while. It, it. it took a while. Yeah, polishing is a labor of love. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I always tell everybody, you either love it or you hate it. Mm -hmm. The people that love it, uh, some it's split 50-50. Some will love it because they love the polishing. Some will love it because they love the money. Right. People that hate it, hate it because it's good money, <laughs> and they can't stand it. You know? Like, yeah. That's the worst part. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I, I'm glad I didn't have these conversations with you guys before. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm actually kind of like, I'm kind of processing in my head a little bit. Like, here's some actual real good stories. Because like, um, the fact that your your stepdad got you into it and yeah. was like, I'll buy you this stuff if you'll do my truck. Yeah. That's a great way to get in. Mm -hmm. Like, very much a free start. Yeah. He was saying how uh, there's a big industry for it and there's money to be made. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I just started... So when you when you first started off, like what did what did you do to start learning? Um, looked up videos. I was watching some of your videos, and then just trial and error, and got better materials eventually, and that helped a lot. Yeah. So you you had a pretty good base before you upgraded to the materials. Yeah. Um, knowledge at least of kind of what to do, but I didn't wasn't sure. I didn't know about sanding. Sure. Stuff like that, and then um, one thing led to another, and came and trained, and then really started picking up. So you were two years into polishing when you came up and trained? Yes. So um, you were here last winter as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, did we, what did we decide that was? February, maybe? I was December. here December. Oh, yeah, Middle December. December, and I was here first of December. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You guys were both in December. Mm -hmm. So you had been polishing two years before you came up and did the training. Pretty much, yeah. Um, you did my three-day beginner course. Yep. Um, and now you're here just kind of hanging out for two days. Like, yeah. You guys had a few issues that we wanted to work through. Um, and like I said, it, in the shop, it worked out great that you were a year in. You've got a better yeah. base and a better knowledge of a lot of the understanding because... We talked about this, the three-day beginner course, like I give you all the information and I teach you everything, but it's so much to soak in. I it's mean, a I'm lot. literally yeah. giving you 25 years of um, knowledge that I've built in three days, and <laughs> it's a it's, lot it's to a soak lot. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you came and did the beginner course, what did you what did you kind of pull out of that to start moving you forward to where you are now? Um, well, up until the course, I never sanded a wheel on a machine or on a stand. Um, I was always laid them up against the wall. Yeah, up I against the wall, and just that, trying yeah. to cut and make it as good as I could. And um, I understood like overlap, but you critiqued my pressure, and pressure was a big thing. And once I fixed that, a lot of my issues went away. And we were looking through old pictures. Yeah. Last night, um, just kind of hanging out in the living room, shooting the breeze, um, and you were showing me some of the old pictures. I was like, man, that looks like a lot of my old work. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I started in the same spot you guys did. Yeah. Um, what else did you pull from that three days that was um, different than what you had already learned in those two years? Um, there was just patterns and techniques that I wasn't aware of up until that point. And have you kind of taken those patterns and techniques and like altered them a bit to like cr kind of create your own now? Yeah, some. Yeah. Yep. Just things that work better for me and. That's what I like to hear. Like I kind of give everybody a guide of what I know works yeah. and stuff that works for not just myself but a, a group of people. Mm -hmm. And then I let everybody kind of hone themselves down and kind of create their own lane of what works for them. So I'm glad to hear that that's actually working for you. It's a really good basis coming through the course. And it's just a set of firm, like, um, not goals, but it's a good foundation for polishing and then you can kind of branch out on your own and try stuff and yeah good i like to hear that and then you were only a month and did in? it for like yeah like a month or less <laughs> and i mean i was watching youtube but your youtube videos like left and right yeah every night like you know really trying to tr figure out like what to do how to do it the right way and it's crazy that you already had the aussie machine yeah that you could have gone out and started making money with that right, right way um but it's crazy that as, as quickly as you caught on that like that wasn't going to be the route you were yeah. going to go. Yeah. Um, so what did what did you grab from those three days? Because you were like fresh then. Oh yeah. Because you came in with like so very was, little. Knowledge. It was so much to take in. Like I mean, it was a lot. Like I had seen the videos, but then when you're there doing it all, trying to take it all in at once, it's it's just a lot. Yeah, I created the online training course right. this past winter, um, or fall, I should say, 
um, because my YouTube videos were never meant to be like full on tutorials. Yeah. Like in the beginning, it just started off as I didn't really have any polishers to watch even what they did. Yeah. So I just started putting out content. Well, then all of a sudden it turned into a how-to channel. And then once it was a how-to channel, I was like, I need to start putting out better content. In the beginning, I was worried, like, I was teaching people how to do what I did. I was worried about giving it away and that yeah. people were going to come into my because area. Because no one had done that yet. No one had put any videos out yet. Yeah. And um, it didn't take me long before I met some other polishers and they were like, yeah, I already knew that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, if everybody already knows it, then I may as well just give it all out. Yeah, you know, exactly. I may as well just teach everybody everything, you know? So I just kept pushing and then I started, I feel like I started putting out better videos, better how to's, more instructional stuff. Yeah. And the difference between my YouTube channel and the, the content I put out versus the in-person training class, it's a lot more in depth. Yeah. And I often wondered, like I get to ask you guys now, do you feel like since you had watched some of the YouTube videos ahead of time, do you feel like even some of the stuff you watched and learned on the YouTube videos, doing it in person in my shop, do you feel like that in-depth was way different than what you saw on the YouTube video, or it just made more sense being there? I wouldn't say it's way different. I would say it just made more sense. So, like, I mean, you can go out and try it all you want, but if you aren't doing, like, the right pressure, you're just not going to get the right results. Yeah. Not got the right technique, I mean, it's not going to end out how you want it. Because the angle of the buff makes a big difference, yep. you know, and I, I get a lot of polishers come in that their buff's just a little crooked. Yep. It's like straighten that up and you get better results. On something flat, turn it sideways a little bit, you're going to get better results. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of the little things that it's hard to, hard to get across in a video. Or kind of like we worked with the rotary today, yep. just how it can be slightly angled and yeah. that can be causing all the issues. So let's just bring that up. One of the, one of the things I teach in the class... Um, at the end of the first day after we get pressure and technique down is I teach rotary sanding and DA sanding mm -hmm. and I taught you guys how to rotary sand and yeah. DA um, but you had been avoiding rotary sand because you were uncomfortable with it no I had not I, I was doing it um, on tanks I just didn't really use it as much you just didn't feel comfortable or why I don't know I just didn't really I think I would rotary I just didn't do it very often hmm. on tanks I always do it because it's quicker. Yeah. It cuts down my time quite a bit. Yeah. But you were having uh, dipping issues. Yeah. You were leaving little waves in it. So I just DA'd. Yeah. So, um, was it two weeks ago you messaged me? Some, yeah. About, about that was like two weeks ago, and you had sent me a picture, and it was waved out. Yeah. And I was like, holy cow, what grit did you start with? And you're like, 180 grit. I'm like, how rough was the tank? <laughs> yeah. Then right. you showed me the tank. I was like, dude, I wouldn't have done more than 400 and 600. Mm -hmm. And then when you did the other side, you did just 400 and 600. And it yeah. came out just as nice as the side you did the 180 yeah. with. Yeah. Um, just because the tank was already nice. You didn't need to cut all the way down to that new material. But you still had a waving issue. Mm -hmm. And then today, watching you do it again, we just figured out moving it from 3 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Or from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You had moved from 3 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Yep. And being pressure on that 2 o'clock had changed it. Just straighten it out that little bit, fix the issue. Yeah. Not much at all. And then adjusting the pressure. Mm -hmm. That was the other thing. Yeah. Because it was a little light. So being light on the pressure plus being at 2 o'clock, it just made a river yeah. coming down. Every time you ended on that corner, it just bit in and took a chunk out. So little stuff like that that I'm glad like you instantly corrected. Yeah made it perfect we sanded it out to 400 and you guys glassed out 400 i mean we show finished 400 right mm -hmm. and yep. most guys are running it to six because they're not sanding properly or they're running it to eight because they're not sanding properly um and you were doing were you doing some rotary sanding and then cutting over the top of the rotary and not i had tried it, it we, once. We, yeah we had both tried it and was like mm, this just don't seem, like, more, this more seem right yeah. yeah yeah so yeah we just reiterated it again today though yeah you throw that sheet of da in between Everything just gets so stupid smooth, yep. mm -hmm. and everything just levels off so easy. Like, I know it takes time to throw one grid of DA in the middle and one grid of DA at the end, but honestly, it's it so makes a it. huge yeah, difference so in the it. finish. Yep. Um, once again, everybody's got their own way. They can do whatever they yeah, want. Yeah, I mean, you to. can do it however, and yeah. if you you get a mirror, it's just yeah, it's just how much work you want to put into mm -hmm. it. Yep. Um. And yeah, then we worked on some raw stainless. Yeah, that was that was good, wasn't it? That was good. I think I, I think I looked at you and told you that um, 
the end of that tank was going to take two to two and a half hours. Yep, before we even started it, right when we were starting to get ready. Yeah. And I thought we could do it with 180 grit, and turned out we didn't. Drop down even We lower. ended up dropping down to 120, yep. and it was spot on two and a half hours. It yep. was, yeah. It was exactly two and a half hours by the time we got it to where... For one end cap. <laughs> a piece, yeah. literally a foot, maybe two feet foot wide half, by yeah. nine to ten inches tall. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Welcome to Raw Stainless. Yeah. Yeah, that That's was good, a, wasn't it? Process. It's a beast. Can't wait yeah. to, you know, Do get to the rest of it. No, get to the rest of it. It's like, oh, oh I take fun. a bumper. It's not so bad. I've done some raw finish bumpers. I've done um, Keith Smart Jr. years back. Uh, he built that truck, Talk of the Town. Um, it's actually in Illinois now. One of Summershine's customers has it. And um, all the rear panels, all the eye panels, all the bumpers, everything was raw stainless when mm -hmm. I got it. And I literally spent days and weeks on them things. Yeah, that sucks. I want to say I was on it for two solid weeks. I, I had over 120 hours in two bumpers and an eye panel. Wow. But we went to Louisville that year. He won everything he was in. I wish we'd have been in every class that he would have had a chance for winning best of show because he'd have probably gotten best of show that year. Um, but yeah, we won every class he had competed in. He, I think he brought home like five or five, four or five trophies that yeah. year. And um, everybody kept thinking his wheels were chrome and that that stainless was chrome. And I was like, dude, that was like one of the greatest things for me. Yeah, that's amazing. It was, it was a big accomplishment. If people were thinking my stuff was chrome, dude, that was when I was like, I made it. Yeah, that was it. You know? Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad you guys are, I'm glad you guys are back this year. Yeah. And I'm glad we could correct the, the issues you had. Um, honestly, the the waving issue we had figured out in yeah, super literally easy. It was 10 like, minutes. Yeah. It was literally just watch, figured it out, corrected, moved on. Like the first four or five passes. <laughs> it was like, yeah. well, slide that down a little bit. Pressure in three o'clock. That's yeah. all it was. It wasn't bad at all. And once again, I, I'll repeat what I, what I say in my original training course is that technique is key. Yep. And your pattern, it it all comes down to technique and pattern. Mm -hmm. Like you can polish till you're blue in the face, but if it's if it, if the process isn't right, you'll never you'll never have what you yeah. want. Yep. Yeah, you're always gonna get stuck with something. Um, but yeah, that's pretty cool. It's it's cool to see how far for me. The best part about training for me is I like seeing how far people have come. Yeah. Like I've been watching you guys on Instagram. In watching how far you guys have come already, you in a year, yeah, and you in a, a year since you've been through the training course, mm -hmm. just grown by leaps and bounds. And now you're starting to get return customers. Yep. And we talked about this yesterday, um, but go ahead and say what you said last night. About what part? The tank that you've been doing. This is your third oh, time doing it. Yeah. So I have a guy that's um, been having this truck done a couple times a year. And this tank's really glassing out, and it's a quick, um, it's quick to go over, and it's really, really clearing up, and it's like a show finish tank. And, and have you been still starting with an orange, or are you starting with a yellow? I start with the yellow. I go softer. Yeah, so you do yeah. start softer. And it's just as easy. And you haven't played around with the untreated whites yet. Not really. Yeah, wait till you start playing with that when you get some real nice stuff. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, you're there right now. Mm -hmm. but that last little bit like that stainless we were talking about today yeah like you can just keep going further yeah. and further and further aluminum event eventually stops like it eventually just says all right enough's enough this is as far as i'll let you go um but stainless it just seems like there's no bottom like mm -hmm. you get into the graded stuff like museum quality stuff and it's graded so there is technically an end like high a's you know yeah a1 a1 mirrors, A1 pluses, whatever they call them now. Um, that's the best you can get. But even then, sometimes you look at it and you're like, I just feel like it could go one step further if somebody really tried. But I don't, I don't know how you get there. It's it's a long process. But um, what about you? Are you starting to get some return customers? Yeah, this year will be, I mean, the first year that I really get return customers. Like throughout the course of last year, I've done yeah. a few trucks in the fall. Yeah. But um, this year will be... A lot of spring customers coming back. Yeah. So. It's exciting for me to see, like, um, how much more fun you have once you're not sanding everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah once you start getting them return customers and getting your work that you've put the time into already. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because I always tell everybody, like, my first six years, I sanded so much stuff, and I, I dealt with so much, I don't want to call it junk, because it wasn't junk, but stuff that I had to sand a ton. It was just a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. And once I started getting return customers, it was a great feeling, because it's like, now I could just cut it, color it, get out. Right. Make some money, get out. They're happy, because they're done real quick. I'm happy, because I'm done real quick. Um. You guys both looked at me funny when I said tomorrow we're going to be done with that truck that's going to be in my shop by 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, see, we just don't get nice. Not, <laughs> and it's not nice stuff, but return work like that often, so we're just not used to it. Yeah. The first time I met Zach and Keenan I had and Parker, I had invited them to the Tulsa Truck Show, and they were doing a truck like every two to three days, and I'm sure you've heard that in the previous podcast, but when we were at Tulsa, I literally threw them to the wolves. It was, all right, we got to get 10 trucks done today. Let's figure it out. Yeah. And we got 10 trucks done in that day, and they were like, I don't know how that was possible. Like, everything looked good. I don't know what we were doing different. Yeah. So it'll be exciting for you guys to see tomorrow, like, what my... Well, you kind of saw it last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, last year at Louisville, yeah. we did it, though. Yeah, you worked with me yeah, at Louisville was, last year. I was at Louisville, year. and that's... Uh, most of the stuff for Louisville, I polish it before it goes. I yeah. just got to touch it up, get the weather yeah. off of it if they drove through some, something, but... It's not bad down there. You'll get to see me with a truck tomorrow. That uh, <laughs> It's nice, but it's not like, it's not Louisville nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be more than a touch-up tomorrow, but we're going we're gonna to blast through it. Oh, it'll, it'll go fast. i got high expectations that uh, the, the three of us can get it done by 9, 30, 10 o'clock at the latest. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see you guys hustle and see what the stuff looks like when you guys are done because mm-hmm. it's going to be a good time. It'll be a race. Yep, I'm sure of that. <laughs> I am sure of that. Um, but yeah, so you're both gonna be getting some return customers. That's gonna be a good. It's gonna be a good s- setup for the pace for yeah. the rest of your career. Yeah. Um, if you can build a base model, is your. Do you feel like your trucking customers are younger, middle, or older? Like age. Yeah. A lot of middle age. Middle? A lot of I would say age. around middle, yeah. yeah. 40s, 50s. I had, for the longest time, I had a, a lot of older guys yeah. that have slowly been moving out of the industry, whether they're retiring or um, just finding something else because the trucking industry is not great right now. Um, but we, we've all been busy, even though it's not been great. Yeah. But I've noticed, like, I'm getting a younger crowd. I w- yeah, I would say younger to, like, middle age. Yeah. Which I use Snapchat a lot for, like, Posting a lot of videos yeah, and stuff. And I, I people, need to do a better job of People that. contact me all the time on Snapchat. Really? Hey, when can you do my truck? When yeah. can you do my, my wheels? You know what I mean? Like, all the time. I always look and at it's my... it's great. I always look at my uh, analytics on yeah. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Like, what my analytics are. Like, what what's the age market I'm hitting, you know? YouTube, I am everything from 14 to 70. But my biggest market is... 45 to 70 yeah. like I'm getting the older guys that are going to YouTube to find how-to videos like to, to do their own stuff and then um, my TikTok is like 30 to 65 yeah and my Instagram is 30 to 65 my Facebook is like I want to say 40 to 70 it's like I just can't tap into that younger market, and um, see that's funny because I mean I get a lot of it. Yeah, I'm I'm really struggling. I, I want to tap into that 18 to 25 market just yeah. because that's the next generation of it truckers. Very much I so. feel like a lot of the older guys, their kids are getting into mm-hmm. it. Their um, their grandkids are getting into it, or they're passing their business on to their kids, kind of stuff. Yep. And a lot of that age group is 18 to 25, and they're polishing and they're keeping their trucks looking nice yep. and they're they're moving into that you gotta catch that market and I, yeah i want to tap into that but i'm really struggling getting into that i i definitely still have that old mentality it was for me it was easy to market on facebook and instagram yeah and now that it's trended into tiktok it's a lot of tiktok and snapchat yeah i don't have a good enough memory to deal with snapchat like see that's I, just where i'm always at i'm always on it and then yeah. like I'll put it on like my public profile on Snapchat, and it'll have yeah. ten thousand views. Really? Yeah. That is insane. Dude, it's wild. I think that a lot of people that follow me, because you guys know I, I post <laughs> shitty memes and stuff on my oh yeah on my Snapchat. Oh, yes. Snapchat's kind of like my private life yeah, where I can I can kind of more be me. Yep. 
because it's not there forever, you know? So I, everybody's going to check that out now. Yeah. Where's he at? <laughs> Probably. Where's he at? I joke around on there a lot. Yeah. Um, and once in a while, I'll post in, like, some sales stuff. Yeah. And I, I do notice that I sell stuff, like, product-wise through there. Like, yeah. if I take a product or if I post something up and put a link on it, like, a lot of people are clicking the links. And I know I should utilize it more. But... You gotta have a personal life too. I mean, that's exactly it. Yeah, it's like where do you stop? You guys saw me last night. Like I talk to you guys, I sit and have a conversation with you. Somebody will call. Yep. And then somebody will email me, and they're like, or they'll text me, "Hey, check your email real quick." It's like, all right, now I gotta grab this because now they asked me to check it. So I feel like it's got to be something important. A lot of times, it's not something super important. It's like I can handle that tomorrow when I get back into the office. Home's never home. No. You know, home is still home office <laughs> you know you're still working and a business they say yeah that'd be <laughs> fun they said that's what they say and then tiktok i i can't break the algorithm there's just too much i there, there's too much happening on there i don't i don't know i don't i would need a full-time media person exactly to shoot videos and do yep. stuff for me because I, I can't keep up with it and that's what's, what it is what's been so you said snapchat's been your your best snapchat and facebook has been well but snapchat i would say has been my best what about you word of mouth Really? Yeah. I haven't advertised at all up really? until um, a little couple months ago. Yeah. I was going to say, because you don't post like no. hardly at all. No. We it's... weren't even friends on Facebook. I just, last night, I don't know if because we were sitting in the same room, you showed up in my um, For You feed. Yeah. I was like, dang. He I just wasn't... made a Facebook though. Like he didn't have one. Oh, really? Yeah, about a month and a half ago. Wow. Because I just added It's them, been all word of like, mouth. Like three or four days ago, wow. I added them on Facebook. Good for you. Because, um... Where most where I started. Yeah. I mean, I worked at the truck wash, so I, that helps. Yeah. I knew a lot of guys. So yeah, that exactly. helped. But yeah, word of mouth is the strongest thing you could do, I think. But everybody's on social media, driving mm-hmm. on the road, swiping, yep. scrolling. Yeah. But all word of mouth, no real. No. No real marketing, because you've got uh, Instagram, don't you? Yeah. Um, it's a more of a personal Instagram. Yeah. But I've just kind of started posting trucks on it. I've not posted it. anything on my Instagram. Really? Mm-mm. But wow. I haven't got any business off of Instagram. Yeah, you gotta post. You gotta post pretty consistently to get that. Yeah. Because uh, the algorithm on Instagram, you gotta post daily, at least a couple times a week minimum. Yeah. To keep the traffic. Oh, definitely. So many bots and spam and all that. Yeah. Like, it just blows my mind how much is how much is. Out but you've there. got a huge following on Instagram. Yeah, so I got I got really lucky. Yeah. Um, Instagram was easy for a number of years. Yeah. Like, all you had to do is have a trending hashtag, and it would put you in people's For You page. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And when metal polishing started really taking off, I had my YouTube channel was going strong. Yep. And I was just finding the right hashtags on a regular basis, and people were just following it. And then by the time uh, Chris Fifey did the documentary, it just blew up after that. Yeah. So it, it went quick. A lot of people watched the video and... Um, ended up following me through that and finding me through there and then they found that like I would respond to their messages yeah. like mm-hmm. if they called me or texted me I would I would respond to them I've always been good about that yeah like, I had a guy yesterday he said um hey I saw you that you dropped your phone number in a YouTube comment for a guy to text you some pictures for some issues he was having yeah uh, I don't know if you if this is actually your phone number or if you actually read these but you know I just wanted to ask you a question and I was like yes this is Evan <laughs> like this is my personal cell number yeah. like and he's like, man, I can't believe you're actually giving people your personal cell number. I'm like, sometimes I wish I don't. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I want to help everybody. Yeah. Always um, have been there. Any Anytime we've ever had a problem, like, give you a call. Here, what are you doing? Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And yep. I like that and you then, guys, you guys really try to work through the issue first. Yeah. And, yep. Like, you guys are using me as a last resort. Yep. Like, I can tell. Usually when, by the time you guys message me, you're frustrated. Yeah. And you're like... <laughs> I just can't. Or we hold out. off till the next day. Like, hey, I don't want to bug you at night. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you need to, you need to enjoy your evenings. Yeah. Yep. I'll, I'll get messages at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. And some nights when my phone buzzes, I'll, if I'm still awake, I'll roll over and answer it. But other nights I'll wait till first thing in the morning and I'll, I'll answer first thing in the yeah. morning. But um, I try to help out, especially the guys that have been through my training course. Yeah. If you text me, I try to get you that answer back as quick as possible because I know when you're in the thick of it, yeah. it's just easier to hammer it out. And if you're stuck, I don't want you to have to go back tomorrow to finish the truck because you couldn't figure it out. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. That's pretty wild. 
So you guys are liking it so far? Like you guys haven't, um, is there anything you've stumbled into that you were like, man, I wish I went to taking this job on? Employees. <laughs> Employees? Employees. Try to, try to find one that wants to stay. That's hard. It's so tough. It's a dirty job. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a dirty job. You don't stay clean. It's hard work. And do you plan on getting employees at some point? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, it definitely makes things go faster, even just having a hand polisher yeah. to chase you. Just to chase you. Yeah, set yeah. jacks up. So you don't break your rhythm? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, a, that's a huge one. That was the biggest thing for me, was when I finally got a chaser, yeah. and I didn't have to slow down to, yeah. to get myself off pace. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was finding another cutter. Yeah. Once you find another cutter... They can match oh, you. It's it's crazy. Like you mm -hmm. you double your time. Yeah. We we actually worked on a truck yep. one day and knocked it out in like four hours. Yeah, it went a lot faster. We worked together yeah. on a truck. A couple That's trucks. Awesome. We did a couple trucks together. Yeah. That's sweet. Yep. So I mean that was cool. But like I don't know, like I'll have boys work for me, they'll do a great job and just a clean job will come up or something, you know? Yeah. It is what it is, I don't blame them. Yeah, it's hard when it's this dirty. Yeah. And this labor intensive. It's hard to get guys to stick around. Yep. That's the toughest part. That's definitely the toughest part. Um, what's been like the highlight of your, I know it's a short career so far, you're only a year and three years in, but like uh, what's been the highlight of it so far? Uh, for me, um, my third job, this guy wanted a 1962 smaller camper done. It was a travel camper. Yeah, travel camper. One of the rib sided ones. Yep, yeah. rib side travel camper. And it was the first time using Evan's products. And I had like 95 hours in it. Um, underbid it by a mile. <laughs> and Been there, done that. Yep, yeah. I was able to get it done though, and it turned out good. Yeah. I remember seeing the final. I, th I don't remember if you sent me the picture of it, I think. Yeah. When you were done with it. I think um, so. Or maybe I seen that you on the it, post. Yeah, yeah, that you had it posted. Yeah, and I was like, dang, I've done two of them. They are a ton of work. Yep. And like, ninety-five hours. That was moving. Yeah. For <laughs> for only your third big job. <laughs> yeah. You were moving. I like, had done two trucks and then that. Really. And yeah, I wasn't sure what to do, but. <laughs> I always tell everybody getting into big stuff like that early on in your career is, it, it's demoralizing. Yep. Like, it hinders you from wanting to do more big stuff yeah. because you weren't prepared for it, mm -hmm. and then it it never it usually never ends up well. And yours did. It did. But like you got it, lucky. It, it looks it looks so nice. The thing yeah. looks great. Yeah. <laughs> so, the fact that it worked out well, kudos. Because had it not worked out well, and the guy was mad and didn't want to pay you, you'd have been like, forget it. I don't even yeah. want to polish anymore. Yeah. Right. That would that would been horrible. Quickly could have ruined that. Yep, yeah. Very much so. Like I, I know a lot of guys that I train them, and three months later they're like, "How much? How much should I quote the guy for doing this dump trailer?" I'm like, "Don't. You're not ready." Yeah. No, listen. He's I'm, told he's told both of us that, and we didn't argue it. I was like, "Yep." I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing a lot of stuff really well, and I'm glad you guys have listened to me. And it's yeah. not that I'm trying to talk you out of work. No, definitely. It's I don't want to see you get burnt out because I've watched a lot of polishers take on a job like that, and then it was too big to handle, and it didn't work out, yeah. and then they quit. And you guys are good ones. Like, I want to see you guys stick around for a while. Yeah. So I don't want to see you guys just bail out and have it not work. Because of a big job. Because of one big job, yeah. you know? You guys get another three or four years under your belt and then take on a dump trailer. You're going to have a lot more knowledge. If you bump into something and it doesn't work out right, you'll have a lot more knowledge to be able to correct the issue and keep moving. Yeah. That's the That's the biggest thing is, like, if you can't, fix something when it goes wrong it's the worst feeling yeah mm -hmm. and for me i can't help a lot at that point like how do i how do i tell you there's a whole different pattern to do a dump trailer and i mean then, that's the thing and then if you don't understand it to explain it to like cock your buff at one to one to seven yep. or like we went over the today 11 to 5 that. you know yeah. like if i don't if you can't understand what i'm saying through text messages or yeah messages how can i get you to fix it and now you're committed to this job and whether you're halfway or three quarters of the way i got a fuel tank that i gotta finish up the end of the month because the polisher was down on his luck and told the guy he needed some money and he'd get it done the guy paid him he got about three quarters of it done got paid and left mm. 
now the trailer's three quarters of the way done and for me it's a start over kind of job yeah like his pattern's not bad but it's not what you want to have your name on but it's not what I'm going to want to put my name on yeah so it's like now I've got to start over even though it's three quarters there it's almost done for me it's not almost done like that's a that's a start at zero and get it to a hundred you know (laughs) So it's it's concerning. There's still a lot of that out there, but um, I'm glad you guys listen to me when I tell you not to take on a yeah, job. Yeah, definitely so. It keeps you guys from some heartache for sure. Mm-hmm. In another year or two, I'm going to tell you to take those jobs. Yeah. And quote it high so that you don't lose your tail yep. on your first one. <laughs> Why did you not take that job? <laughs> yeah. You know, I tell you guys all the time, a hard no is yeah. mm-hmm. better than an easy yes. Yep. He's telling somebody no is the hardest thing we can do in this industry. But telling everybody yes, sometimes it hurts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it hurts yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, have you guys been burnt on anything yet? Like any job you took on that you were like, man, this is going to be great, and then it didn't work out? I don't have any like big memories of anything like that. No. Yeah. Not necessarily. Um, just getting into the projects that ended up needing more sanding or they just take way longer than I expect. Did you already have them like price though? Like did you tell them a price ahead of time? Sometimes. Um, yeah. Other guys are just like do it and make just, it look good. Yeah, just adjust it as you go. Yep. Fix it, make it right. Yeah, there's a few times where like I've given people <laughs> quotes. Like they sent me pictures over the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Actually. Pictures over the phone are never good. In fall. Just, in fall. I had a guy tell me, he's like, yeah, yeah, the truck's decent. Mm-hmm. The truck he sent me wasn't even the truck he sent pictures of. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, uh, this one's like way worse. Like, mm-hmm. this is going to take me two days to do. And he's like, well, what's that going to cost? You already quoted me. I'm like, I quoted you on a completely different truck than this. Like, the wheels aren't the same. The tanks aren't the same. I'm like, I quoted you on a different truck. He's like, well, it wasn't that much worse than the one I sent you. I was like, dude, this is a two-day job instead of a four-hour job. Right. Yeah, it makes a big difference. And he's like, well, what's the price difference? I told him the price difference. He's like, well, I guess just do it. But you kind of quoted me that other price. I'm like, no, I quoted you that price on a different truck. Right. He's like, well, if you look in the picture, it's the truck in the back. Oh. I was like, oh, okay. Perfect. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah. No, that, that don't slide for me too well. I, I usually try to correct that right away so that it's not a conversation when it's time to get paid. Right. Yeah. Right. Talk about it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Yep. As soon as you walk up on the truck, I'm like, hey, I, I can tell that this is it right. Yeah. Yep. You did say that um, you worked on a pistol. Yeah, yeah, I tried to do that slide. The, the slide didn't work out. I had one. An AR slide. AR slide, yeah. It I was had cerakoted. Cerakoted? Yep. Cerakoted. So, so I had to tough. sand off the cerakote because that way you could keep the windows cerakoted black. And when we went to cer- sand it, like, cerakote's so tough. Took just, forever. It just, yeah, it didn't want to come off, or I would have had to drop down very far. You and then rounded you, it out. Yeah, you round it out yeah. versus keeping it square. I had a guy send me a pistol one time, and it, it had Cerakote on it. Yeah. I was like, dude, this is terrible. Yeah. Like, I'm never doing that again. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be buying a guy a gun. No. Know? That was yeah. way more work. Buy something raw. Send it to me raw. I'll polish it out. Give me like a nice silk stainless revolver or something. I can shine that thing out. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything with Cerakoting on it, no thanks. I, I didn't. I didn't have any. Any inkling to want to do that ever again. Which we can get them raw, but then to do the windows, not yeah. being cerakoted, we're just having them, leaving them raw. Yeah. It's kind of like, hmm. My AR, I had my buddy that builds guns. Yeah. I had him buy the pieces that I wanted polished in raw. Yep. And then uh, I polished them all out and then gave them to him to assemble. And, dude, that was the best move I ever did. Like, it was so nice. I, I was going to get them all last night and show you guys, but uh, tonight I'll have to... Get them all so you guys can yeah, definitely take so. a look at them. They're pretty cool. And then I've got a Taurus PT92. Um, it's an aluminum chassis with a stainless slide. And um, they come, quote unquote, polished finished. Um, they're far from. Yeah, it's, our not, it's not, what, not what we think. <laughs> and the stainless is. slide isn't polished at all. Just, just the aluminum part is polished. So I took mine and I, I have one unfinished and I have one that's glassed out nice and chromed out um i'll have to get that out for you too i, I bought the other one because i was going to get it gold plated <laughs> never did do it yeah never I mean, it through. there's a polisher on instagram that i've talked to for years that's a uh, really nice guy 
Uh, he's a gun polisher. And I've been, he does plating and stuff. I've been really debating just sending it to him, have him polish it and plate it his way because I want a gold one and a shiny one. I just always thought it'd be neat to have the, have the set together, um, especially since they're both the same gun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my, my piece that I carry every day is completely different. It's the Louis Vuitton Cerakote yep. Glock. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it shoots so straight. I, I love that Glock. It's so, so nice. It's a very, very accurate weapon. But yeah, it just comes in handy. I think I saved it. One of my buddies was at SHOT Show, and there was a completely like rose gold plated Uzi. Really? With a silencer on it. It was slick. You know, I had a chance to buy a, a chromed Uzi and a chromed Desert Eagle. Mm. Um, probably 12 years ago. But business wasn't good. I didn't have the yep. money to do it. Yep. So I passed up on both of them. And I, to this day, I still regret not getting either one of those. Because that... That chrome Uzi was sweet, like so oh, nice. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, where's it at now? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. I thought about going back to another shot show and see if I could find another one, just because I've always wanted a Desert Eagle. They're cool guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just big hand cannons. Oh yeah. oh yeah, and they look cool when they're chromed out. Oh yes, they look really cool chromed out. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say, last year you went along with me to Louisville. Yep. What did you think? You worked Louisville. Mm -hmm. And then Hayden, you just went and spectated a little. Mm -hmm. um, did you go just for the one day, or did you go for multiple just days? Just one day. Just one day. Yeah. How far a drive is that for you guys? It's only like two hours, two and a half. Yeah, it's I not bad at all. Two and a half, three. Oh, that's easy. You can almost yeah. drive back and forth each day. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely could if you wanted to. Yeah. Okay, so from the polisher standpoint, you yep. saw how fast paced it was. Yeah. And not only do we polish, but I also detail. Yep. So like you got to see a lot of the little stuff last year that we had to do. Did everything. Yeah. Yeah. Clocking tires, juicing yep. tires, yep. all that stuff. A lot goes into it. A yeah. lot. Picking stones out of the treads. <laughs> Every, not a single rock <laughs> Literally left. Literally yeah. everything. Um, what did you think of the experience? It was super cool. Yeah. Um, just being around all them trucks, like the amount of time that's went into all of them. It's wild. Just so much work. Yeah. Trucks rolling in. All right, we got to have these done before, you know, this time. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Then get them in their spots. And it's then a what lot of work. You, what did you think from a spectator side? I was trying to just take everything in. Yeah. Um, it was the first big show I've been to. Um, there's one show home locally that I go to, but other than that, it was a f other. It was the first show I've been to. How big is the How big is the one back home? Um, probably all work trucks. Yeah, it's just work trucks that yeah. get shined up and. How many you think? Fifteen to twenty. Oh really? Yeah. That's pretty big for a small town show. Yeah, yeah. it isn't bad. It's a good time for everybody to get out and have a beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I was just trying to take in like the crazy trucks and just all the details yeah. that go into all of them. It's nice that there's a lot of people out there you can talk to them too, you can ask them about their trucks, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Is there anything that you saw that you were like, I can't believe they did that or the cattle pot. Yeah. All polished all out. All polished out. Yeah. All us going through and degreasing the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. That was wild. Blowing that yeah. That blow by tube, blowing oil all over everything. Yeah. I beg Zach and the boys not to polish that. Um, just because going into Louisville it's a time crunch the way it is. Right. It's a lot of stuff to polish mm -hmm. um, and then to get it done and get it done right. It's something you don't want to be rushed on. Yeah. And it was their first their first cattle pot. Um, they had never done one before. And that big of panels, that thin of panels. Yep. Not being able to take the walk rails off. That was that was something. It's a lot of work to And it came out great. Blend all that stuff in there. Oh yeah, the boys killed it. Yep. I, I was proud of them. Yep. I was I was happy to have the brand's name on it, but yep. it was definitely Zach Parker and Gavin that made that happen. You know, they definitely um, they definitely killed that thing. It was yep. beautiful. We did some wipe down on it when we got there, wipe off some uh, compound stuff and just a bunch of little stuff to make it show firm ready. But mm -hmm. it was pretty impressive to see that that got done in the amount of time it got Melting done. Melting the carpet that it was on. Yeah. Every day we had to fold up the carpet. Literally starting the carpet on fire. Yep. So crazy. Anything else you saw that you were like, uh, whether it was inside the building, some new technology, or outside that you were like, this is this is kind of neat to see. The just the show trucks in general that were built for the shows are incredible. You know, the craziest part is, um, so last year the whole far wall, the the side furthest from my booth, those were all work trucks. This year, 
every one of those trucks that was on that side is being driven up and down the road right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, and they were driven up and down the road before they pulled them off the road to tear them down, polish, polish them up, paint them up, touch everything up, and then get them back on the road. But yeah, the work trucks on that side, they, they work every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, to be in the work truck class, you have to have 75,000 miles within a year to even qualify for that class. So a lot of those guys had 75,000 miles. And someone got it done early and pulled it off the road, repainted, touched up a bunch of stuff, and then took it to the show, and then put it back on the road after. But mm -hmm. it's crazy to think that some of those trucks, you look at them, you're like, there's no way that truck ever works. And then you see them, and you're like, oh, my God, that thing works every day of its life. Yeah, It's in and out of quarries, or it's up and down the highway going from Florida to Wisconsin every day. Mm -hmm. Just working. Just yeah. out there doing it. That's yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, if you were to meet another new polisher, um, what's some good advice that you could give them that you've already caught on to in your short career? I mean, I would say I would say definitely watch YouTube videos. Get as much of that as you can. Go to an in-person training or go to somebody that will teach you that knows. And there's a bunch of people around the country that will do that. Yeah. There's I mean, there's a bunch of places try to out figure there it out on yourself, stuff. but I don't know, seeing somebody else do it that knows, you're going to learn so much faster. Just figure out the better ways to do things. I have a few guys that Cause message can... me a lot, and I'm like, you need, yeah. you, you just need to come. Yeah, like, exactly. Not trying to talk you out of, trying to talk you into spending money, right. but like, you're just not understanding the, the fundamentals. There's so much that goes into it, so many different products, like, until you actually see it happen in person, it's a lot to wrap your head around. Even today. I mean, I showed you guys like six different ways to get to the the end means. Which, you know? yeah, like on that tank, we used four different wheels, five different wheels. We used orange and brown, yellow and show brown. Yep. Um, stitched with green. You could use yellow with green. Yep. Um, and then we did a white with white. Mm -hmm. Yep. So four buffs, Two. Uh, four different compounds. Plus you got DA sanding and red resanding. Yep. And if you wanted to, I mean, if like I said, if we wanted to take that even further, we could have gone from a regular green to a show green. Yep. And then the show green to the white or to a purple and then from a purple to the white. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we mm -hmm. could have just kept stepping it down and just kept getting it smoother and smoother and smoother. But And that's what you see that online and it's like, okay, maybe I have to do all these steps. And, you know, you don't know yeah. because you have no experience. And a lot of people are perfectionists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you go do it in in-person training, you'll learn a lot, I think. One thing I always reiterate back to is, are we putting this in a museum? Right. Or are we taking it down the road? Yeah. Right. Like, hash-free stuff? Cool. It's nice. It's neat. You saw how long it takes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that worth doing every day? To me, it's not. No. As soon as you run to the blue beacon and they hit it with the pressure washer, the, the water from the pressure washer is going to scratch it a little bit when yep. it's too perfect. Or the customer or friends come along and touch it. Like As soon, as, as, soon as you get done as a polisher. Oh, wow, that looks nice. It's, yeah, so Drags smooth. a hand across it's it. Like, it's like, really? Wow. <laughs> I just spent 30 minutes trying to get those hash marks as yeah. light as I could get them, and you came and scratched it way worse than those hash marks were. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or taken right back out into the mud puddles and <laughs> rain, and it's like... Yep, that's exactly it. Yeah, as soon as you start running down the that's road. That's the polisher's life, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty amazing how quick that goes. Job security, I guess, you yeah. know? But yeah, we're. I feel like we're far more critical on ourselves than our customers are. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So. You've got a few customers that are pickier mm -hmm. or more particular than others. Mm -hmm. But on the on the grand scheme of things, we've talked about this a hundred times. I I make a lot of shiny pits in my shop. Yeah. If somebody brings me in a trashed wheel, I'm not telling them I'm going to make it perfect. You want me to make it perfect? Go buy a new wheel, and I'll make that thing glass. But if you're going to bring me a white acidized roached out wheel that's like 16 years old I'll make it shiny yeah but if I gotta spend eight hours on a wheel I can't recoup that cost no like I could buy you a new wheel polish it up and charge you the same amount I was gonna charge you yeah. and you're gonna be way happier with that wheel and I'll take that wheel and throw it out behind my building yeah. eventually somebody will buy that wheel because they need one because they craft one yeah locally but yeah no you gotta Manage customers' expectations. Yep. And keeping cost 
at a normal price. I mean, yeah. You know, like for your time. Too. It's like okay, this truck doesn't need a wheel that's gonna be, you know, we, we're gonna have to charge one fifty for it. Like yeah, and not just that, but like, I feel like if you start getting to that point where like you've had to spend yeah three or four hours on a wheel or two hours on a wheel, and now I gotta charge a customer one hundred fifty dollars for it, they're gonna pay it one time, but now next time it only needs. 10 minutes worth of polishing yep. and it's only going to cost 30 or 40 dollars 50 dollars at the most yep. um, the customer thinks it's still going to cost 150 from the last right. time because that's what they have in their mind for what you charged last time and they're not going to want to do it again for yeah. another you know however many years I always tell people if you're going to be expensive um, like t- to spend two hours on a wheel educate your customer yep. it was 150 this time next time you come here it'll be 50 like, I but completely. we have to maintain it. If you're letting it slide until it's that bad again, it's gonna be 150 again next time. Yep. Maintain it. Come to me once every year. It'll be a lower price, but a lot of people don't. Yep. And then they end up losing the customer because the customer thinks they're expensive, and that if it's gonna be that expensive every year, I don't want to do it every year. Right. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, definitely, definitely manage. Not just the polishing side. We talked about this when you were saying you were going to online college, uh, for business that. Um, it's not just the polishing side, it's the paperwork, yeah. it's the everything else. You gotta educate your customers on what to expect and what, how to maintain all that stuff on the back side of it. Mm-hmm. So, polishing's the easy part. Exactly, <laughs> there's a lot on the back side. Yep. And then when you start advertising, it really puts a wrench in the mix. It's a lot of stuff. So, we get to the fun part. You guys can ask me pretty much whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you guys have gotten to know me pretty yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, we've we've asked questions. I always ask questions. Yeah, and I don't mind. I I enjoy it. Yeah, you guys have been good people to have around. Good, good people to have at the shows. It'd be nice to work with Hayden sometime in the future. Yeah, yeah that'd be fun. Um, get you to see Louisville. This year, I got my schedule booked light because I don't want to be overly busy this year. But uh, if you if you end up doing a truck for Louisville next year or if you just want to go and work Louisville I'd, I'd love to have you with me like um, I try to bring in people every year to help out it'd be, it'd be great to have you next year because uh, I feel like you guys have come a long way you could definitely definitely hang your hat in the ring at Louisville for sure I think just seeing that side of the polishing world would be cool too yeah it's, it's a, a whole different it's a whole different side yeah it's a whole other creature yep. Especially if it's cold or snowy or <laughs> rainy or playing the weather game. Oh man, there is nothing worse than playing the weather game. Get there, no rain, no rain, no rain. Brutal. <laughs> Two hours before. Yep, it's gonna be a downpour. It's gonna rain right before it rains. Perfect. Down. Great. That's what we need. Go home, get some sleep, because we're gonna be up early to get everything wiped down. And we was. We was up early, wiping down. Yep. Yeah, we were there at 5 a.m. Yeah. Or 4.30. Nobody else was there. For rigs down at 8. Yeah. Yeah. Up early. Everybody thought it was going to be cold and they weren't going to get to wipe nothing down. I try to always beat everybody there. I feel so much better when I'm there and nobody's bothering me and I kind of yeah. blast through everything and get my get my work done. Yeah, it works out pretty well that way. Yeah. What did you guys do before this? Well, you were only 16 when you started. Yeah, I was a sophomore in high school. So, did you have jobs before that? I worked um, for some friends that have a garden business, and I just did like behind the scenes work, and um, polishing started picking up, and I slowly started transitioning out of that, working after school like every day, trying sure. to get trucks done. And so how many how many trucks do you think you did last year? Close to fifty. I'd fifty say. trucks last year. Yeah. That's a solid like, that's a strong year. Yeah. Because, like, you weren't doing just little stuff. Like, you weren't doing just wheels. It was no. almost, like, all complete yeah. trucks. it was all oh, yeah. Pete's. All Which it seems like that's Pete's. how we, we do, like, complete trucks. Yeah. It's all, often, yeah. often complete Six trucks. Six wheels, yeah. You guys got a lot of farm down in that area. Yeah, yeah. two tanks so a lot and grill, typically. Yeah, it's, it's everything. That's awesome. Took on a couple bigger customers. One had 15, the other had 10. That's awesome. Yeah. And by yourself, 50 trucks is a lot in a year. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very much so. And I had, my brother would help me hand polish here and there, chase me. How old is he? Uh, 17. Sure. Yeah. Some good bonding time. Yeah. It's always nice to be on the road together. Yeah. And you? I ran a garden center in the spring, like on my own one day, or yeah. one, one spring. Yeah. 
did that for a few months. Um, when I was in school, I just kind of helped in my parents' garden center. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, got into this. And that was, that was kind of it. Kind of it. Yeah. So do you guys think this is something you're going to do for long term? I think so. Do it for a while, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I always enjoy seeing guys that are young and wanting to do it. Um, Zach and I talk about this all the time. I'm not getting any younger. Yeah. There's parts of my body falling apart yeah. that I'm like, I truly love doing it. I wish my body could hold up. But I'll tell you guys, try to stay as healthy as you can. Yeah. Do your stretches every night. Wear that respirator as yep. much as possible. Yep. I'm honestly jealous of your respirator, Aiden. I, I need to get myself one of those. Yeah. One of those controlled air ones. I, I see a lot of polishers getting into them now. And, yeah. Um, the price has come down. They were like $3,500 when I first looked, and now they're significantly less. You said yours was like 1800 bucks. Yes. Yeah. I definitely need to get one. They, they definitely look like they're handy. And they're super comfortable. It's not squeezing your face. Just yeah. at the end of the day, like to have a clean face mm -hmm. or like go to lunch, clean face and not be black. It's like, wow. So I was going to ask you with that, the side pieces, can you still like catch your earbud to get it to answer a phone call yeah. and stuff? Yeah. I touch it to pause totally. and yeah. I didn't and know that. Can you talk with that thing running? Yeah. Really? I, I'll open my hood or open the, the latch and... Um, turn off the mask sometimes just because of the air but yeah you can still talk huh that was always my biggest worry is like i talk way too much when i'm working yeah yeah like i i was wondering if i could still talk while i was grinding if the if the noise of the grinder still got in there a whole lot i haven't tried to that would be nice. polish and talk yet but yeah i've tried being on the fan on the I airpods and it just it does not work my buddy craig he's a welder so He'll call me and he'll be welding in the background yep. and I can hear him and he's like, I'm sorry, I'm going to grind real quick. I'm like, I don't care. I'm used to hearing the grinder yeah. all day anyways. But yeah, him and I will talk while, while we're both working all the time. Yep, same here. One of my buddies powder coats and the other one washes fleets. So yeah. all the time. Pressure the washer running. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> we're on the call, you know, just talking about something. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you guys on the show. Um, I'm interested to get this one uploaded and get people knowing who you guys are. I, I know I've mentioned you both in previous podcasts, yeah. saying that uh, I think you guys got a good future ahead of you. I think there's a lot of potential for you guys. Um, you guys are both going to be good polishers in the scene. It's nice to see other businessmen getting into it, yeah. That um, especially young businessmen, because um, this industry has been full of tweakers and crackheads and people and it's got a name for that people catching money and bailing out yeah like that's that's a big thing and I, I know you guys aren't those guys right so i'm excited to see you guys keep growing and keep moving forward um but yeah i wish you guys nothing but success in the future yeah thank, thank you. you appreciate you being on and hopefully we get you on again at another round table we're I was just talking with keenan about this yesterday that uh at some of the shows we need to set up a table and i agree do some yeah. podcasts and get a get a bunch of polishers sitting at cool. one table just yep. ribbing each other and talking trash and having fun. Definitely. I need to figure out a full podcast setup. If anybody knows how to set up like a full podcast setup with like the earphones, yeah. the recorder and all mm -hmm. that stuff, I, I need somebody to help me out. Get me hooked up because I want to get a full setup. I yeah. want to get like eight headphones, eight mics. When you get a hold of West about it, Wes has been getting into it. Really? Yeah, he's been talking about it. We need to do he that. He might have set up a room already. Let's get with him and figure yeah. out how to do that because I want to get I want to get a big group. That'd be cool. A big group together. I think eight polishers in one room would be some fun stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we could really get a, a good conversation going. but Better than three polishers on a couch? Three polishers on a couch. That was uh, it's actually a first. I think uh, Casey and I... Casey and I were on a, a bed one time, or two chairs close to a bed one time, Yes. Um, in a hotel room. My wife and kids and his wife and son were yep. swimming in the pool. We we had a conversation. There was a couple hotel rooms. Uh, Chase, he was in a hotel room, just him and I, chit-chatting. And uh, I think a coach is a first. This has been the casting couch. The casting couch. Don't let that get out. It's out. <laughs> it's, it's here. But appreciate you guys, and we'll uh, we'll see you in a future episode. Yeah, sounds good.